There is no doubt that humans have to leave the earth because our history tells us that our origins are from Africa, but gradually humans moved out of Africa. He started exploring the world. Exploration is in our genes, so we explored the world and used its resources. Now that we are using most of the resources of the world and we see that these resources will soon run out. Our eyes are now on space. We are now looking at those planets where there are many resources, or also looking at the moon orbiting them. So eventually, humans have to go to space. Since, becoming acquainted with astronomy, mankind has been thinking of settling on other planets besides Earth. We have also written many books on this subject and made films as well. But now it seems that we have come so close, to making this dream a reality as we have, never been before. Our first destination in space will be the moon. Today's research tells us, that by around 2023, China and Russia are going to build a space station on the moon. The United States is also engaged in this effort, to build a space station in space through Artemis 1, and its upcoming missions. But whichever planet we go to, one thing is certain, space stations will be built there using the resources of that planet. It will not happen that, we will take resources from the Earth, because it is very expensive to take anything from the Earth, to space. Our goal is to create technology, that can be used on the moon to build houses and different systems, using resources from the moon. We will use the soil of the moon, to grow plants and make food arrangements. That's why we are experimenting with the soil of the moon, and trying to grow many kinds of plants, in it. Recently, a Chinese company has grown, wheat plants with the soil of the moon. Before that, an American company has grown fenugreek in the soil of the moon. The soil of the moon, is different and quite acidic. This means that the soil of the moon, spoils electronics very quickly. According to one research, the wheels of rovers on the moon, deteriorate quickly, because the soil of the moon, is very abrasive, and eats away at the wheels of rovers and other matters. The soil is made up of tiny particles that are sharp and jagged, which can cause damage to the wheels. NASA has been working on developing new wheel designs, that can better withstand the harsh condition on the moon. As an alternative to Earth, scientists have tested many astronomical types. How would it be, to live in the clouds of Venus, or in the lava tubes, at the bottom of Mercury? Which planet will humans first settle their colonies on, and what will human life be like there? What are NASA and SpaceX doing about all this? Let's see, Elon Musk is adamant, that the survival of humanity is only possible, if we can settle our colonies on another planet, besides Earth. Living on other planets will save us from a sudden disaster, and also provide us with more natural resources. We will start with Mars. Elon Musk believes that, humans will reach Mars by 2029, and settle colonies on Mars, in a few years. Mars has been a difficult location during preparations to achieve this goal, for example, the dust there, due to the constant strong winds, it will collect on the solar panels and make them ineffective. Small pebbles, that hit the surface of the planet, will also cause damage. In 2020, NASA released pictures of broken tires of, Curiosity rover, which broke due to the soil there. In fact, the environment of Mars, is quite unfriendly to humans. The average temperature is, minus 60 degrees Celsius. And without any protective arrangements, anyone will freeze in ice. The density of space is much lower than that of Earth which means that dangerous rays from the sun, will reach without any protective shield. Moreover, there is nothing to breathe on Mars, because, its atmosphere consists of a poisonous mixture of carbon dioxide, nitrogen and argon gas. But all, this can be fixed with the help of modern technology. Even, Mars gravity, which is three times less than Earth's, is not a big problem. However, you will have to spend a few hours a day, on an exercise machine, to keep your body structure, intact. Elon Musk is already preparing such people, who will be dropped on Mars. But, it will prove to be a long journey. The average distance between Earth and Mars is about, 225 million kilometers. If you drive a car at 112 kilometers per hour, it will take you 223 years, to reach Mars from Earth. The minimum distance between Earth and Mars is 62 million kilometers. 
while the maximum distance is 400 million kilometers, the best time to start traveling from Earth to Mars comes once every two years. When these two planets are closest to each other, in orbit and during this time, Starship spacecraft will be sent to Mars. This ship will be attached to a reusable rocket with 25 Raptor engines installed. The total height of this rocket is 121 meters, and it is the largest rocket ever made, bigger than Saturn V, which sent to the moon by NASA. This booster rocket speeds up the ship to 8,650 kilometers per hour, and then it will come back after leaving the ship there. This ship will bring people to Mars in about seven months, and after filling it with fuel made on Mars, it will be sent back to Earth. A plant will be installed on Mars for fuel preparation. This plant will use carbon dioxide and water ice present in the atmosphere there to produce methane and liquid oxygen. This ship can carry 100 to 200 people and 100 tons of things. Starship will travel about 1,000 times a year, and according to Elon Musk, at this rate, a city consisting of millions of people and industries can emerge on Mars by 2050. The city will be protected under domes. Robots will build residential places, and whatever construction is left, it will be completed by three-dimensional printers after reaching there. We are eager to go to Mars. We have also made designs for houses for Mars. We have sent rovers to Mars that are monitoring Mars, observing Mars and taking samples from there, so that we can see if there is life on Mars or not. But even after going to Mars, we will build houses there using the resources of Mars. We plan to take 3D printers to Mars and use them to build houses using resources found on Mars, such as soil and rocks. We will build houses that will be four stories high, and along with that, solar systems will also be present there. Mars is far away from the Sun, so solar systems will not work as efficiently on Mars as they do on Earth because there will be less intensity of sunlight there. But apart from that, we will not have any resources for energy immediately, so we will have to activate solar systems, in any case. From the resources of Mars, houses will be built there, colonies will be built, and then, we have to live in this atmosphere. NASA has organized a competition, regarding what could be the best house, on Mars. The name of this special program was, 3D Printed Habitat Challenge. The first prize was awarded to a project named Mars ICS House, which is a four-story building that will have many rooms that will be connected with the spiral staircases. The walls of the rooms will be curved to create an open feel. Whatever the shape of the house, Elon Musk believes that the most important thing is that the people living there should be self-sufficient in all things. The food will be grown hydroponically with the help of solar energy. Regarding the soil of Mars, it is still unclear how long it will take the plants to grow there. NASA and University of Florida scientists brought soil from the moon to grow plants in it. They sowed seeds at volcano night and added nutrient. Arabidopsis thaliana showed very good growth, which strengthened the idea of settling colonies on the moon, but the moon is too small for this. Equivalent facilities may be available. Mercury is also being examined in this regard. At present, it seems strange to think that our next stop and the next replacement for Earth is a planet that is very close to the sun. Its average temperature is 189 degrees Celsius. The temperature goes up to 427 degrees Celsius at some point every day, and there is no system in the atmosphere of this planet that can stop the dangerous rays coming from the sun. The, the solution was given in 2011. NASA's messenger spotted cheese-like material on the planet's surface, which meant that these are underground lava tube, an underground lava tube in which the colonies would be protected from the sun's rays and extreme temperatures, but the absence of gravity is a problem. There will also be damage due to being weightless for a very long time. The volume of the bones will begin to decrease, and then, due to the lack of any pressure on the bones, calcium will be released from the bones and begin to mix in the blood. The risk of breaking bones will increase. The blood pressure in our brain is lower than in our legs, 
and if gravity is removed, the blood pressure will be equal in the whole body. So blood will start flowing in the veins, vision will be affected, and there will be a risk of stroke. After settling on a planet, there will be many changes in the human body because the gravity there will be different and when the gravity there will be different, it means that there will be a lot of difference in the structure of our body. Astronauts who go to the space station undergo changes in their bodies. Their bone density decreases. They can grow up to an inch and a half in height. Their blood does not circulate in the whole body, so they have to do a lot of exercises. There is a fluid behind our eyes, which causes difficulty in seeing due to lack of gravity. We have a lot of difficulty in seeing. Radiation is very high there, it can damage our DNA. So there are many changes that come to the human body after going to space. Our height will be different, different diseases will attack us and along with this, our bone density will change. And apart from that, the circulation of blood will also start to change. So remember that the human being there on other planet will be very different from the human being on Earth. If you are futuristic, then you know that the shape of man of other planet will be very different from the shape of man on Earth. And the generations that will be born there will be very different from us. Dot. If we turn our direction to the planet Venus, we can get rid of many such problems. The gravity of the planet is almost equal to that of the Earth. Its atmosphere is dense, which can block the dangerous rays, moreover, it contains a significant amount of carbon dioxide from which oxygen can be extracted, but there is a hell behind this veil of vents. Such a large amount of carbon dioxide creates the greenhouse effect and the temperature increases to 475 degrees Celsius. If we stand under 900 meters of water on Earth, the pressure on us will be equal to the atmospheric pressure of Venus. The upper atmosphere here is full of toxic acid rain, which is many times more dangerous than the acid rain on Earth and the wind here blows away everything in front of it at a speed of 360 km per hour, but still why are scientists thinking of going to such a dangerous planet? Venus is hiding in Earth-like space. There is a part on Venus at a height of 50 km where the gravity and pressure are equal to the Earth and the temperature there is 30 to 50 degrees Celsius. So it might be a good idea to build a hanging habitat there. The team has already started working on the Venus operational concept high altitude. In the initial mission, work has been done on a 129 meter long and 34 meter high air ship whose thick density will protect it from temperature. One idea was to use a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen to keep the airship aloft. In this way, this airship will be lighter than the atmosphere of Venus and will remain hanging. Where human life will be possible. Since Venus is close to the Sun, there will also be plenty of solar energy. This energy will be used to keep it hanging in the atmosphere and to cool it. We are looking for life on the planets, but we are also looking for life on the moons that revolve around the planets. There are many moons revolving around Saturn and Jupiter which are big. Big moons called satellite moons and we are also looking for life on them. I will take you to Europa. Europa is a moon that is covered with ice. And under that layer of ice is water. We think that there may be life in this water. So we are already moving around it. But we will also land on it so that we can find life. If there is life there. So that means we can live there. Life can be settled there in the same way. Titan is a moon which belongs to Saturn and there are many chances that humans will go and settle there in the future. There is also a lot of water there and we think that that would be a perfect place for humans to settle in the future, so we're not just looking at planets, we're looking at all the moons in the solar system. Scientists are conducting research on celestial bodies and exploring the possibility of these bodies serving as alternative habitats for humans. It is anticipated that by 2030, humans will begin to migrate from Earth and establish settlements on other planets and the Moon. Then there's another cosmic body on the edge of the solar system that's attracting the interest of explorers. Saturn's satellite Titan is about the size of a small planet. And it is the 10th largest object in the solar system, its diameter is 1.06 times that of Mercury, 
1.48 times that of the Moon and 0.40 times that of the Earth. There are liquid methane and ethane rivers that are like water rivers on Earth and are filled by methane rain. The hydrocarbon mounds here are similar to the sand hills on our Earth. This hydrocarbon can be a good source of energy for colonists. Even in such a remote area, a person will have a shield to avoid dangerous radiation. Saturn's own magnetosphere and Titan's nitrogen cover are 50 times thicker than Earth's. Water ice beneath Titan's surface can be used to produce oxygen. Titan is terrifyingly cold. The temperature here is up to 180 degrees. But colonists won't have to hide inside spacesuits because Titan's multi-atmosphere will disperse the cold, and people can walk around wearing respirators and warm clothes. Scientists believe that on Titan we will have to build houses in the style of such a dome, which are inflated with the help of heat, oxygen and nitrogen. Another unique feature of Titan is that people can fly in the air like birds with wings tied behind them. Weak gravity and multi-atmosphere would make motion in the air possible. Do we really need a new planet to live on? The idea of taking up residence on another celestial body is not new. Rather, it was also revealed earlier in 1975. Recently, a Stanford University team presented a plan for modern settlements between stars and planets. Its shape will be like a torus, which will have a diameter of 1.6 kilometers and its thickness will be 1 and a 150 meters and it will be able to accommodate up to 10,000 people. It would have a separate industrial zone where metals taken from nearby planets would be processed and the residue thrown out into space, which would later serve as a shield against dangerous radiation. Rooms will be provided and all people will be connected with the help of spiral staircases. Where people will be able to see each other going up and down. And this will be possible with this constant rotation. Scientists have long been making plans to colonize other planets. But do you think it will be possible?